Hey there, David from Figma here. In this video, we're gonna dive into some advanced shape functions in Figma. We'll cover powerful tools like Boolean operations, shape image fills, and even vector editing. All designed to help you create cleaner, more stunning designs while also saving tons of time. Whether you're building a custom app icon, crafting a geometric logo set, or creating unique image fills for profile pictures, Knowing these advanced shape tools will level up your design skills. Also, all the activities I'm gonna be covering in this video can be found in a Figma design community file that is linked in the video description below. Click the link, follow along, and with that, let's jump in. In the community file, click on the first activities page. You can watch this video, well, which is this video, and then zoom on in to practice some Boolean operations. What you're gonna do for this first one is you're gonna move things around, Bring this square down here, overlap it a bit, bring this rectangle here, and let's bring that right there. Left click and drag over all of these, go over to more actions and click union. When shapes are union together, you can change their corner radius and make some pretty cool things. You can also double click onto the individual shape and make some other really cool designs as well. For this next one, let's go ahead and subtract. To do this, drag the large blue rectangle about right here, left click over both those shapes and subtract. I can bring this back up here. I can also double click in and move things around afterwards. After you union subtract or do any of the Boolean operations to two or more shapes, you can always view them by clicking on the keyboard shortcut Shift Command O or Shift Control O to view the outlines of those strokes. From here, you can click those selected shapes, move them around and edit them as you would like. If that keyboard shortcut isn't working for you, you can always hit Command forward slash and search outline to show outline strokes or to turn the outline strokes view off. Let's move on to the next one. For this one, we're gonna practice intersection. Left click and drag over both these shapes, go up here and click on intersect. You can also go back and double click, make sure to select the star. You can change properties of those shapes as they're already intersected together. Pretty cool. For this one, let's practice excluding. Let's bring this down here, snap these together just like so. Left click over both of them, go up here to this top panel and click on exclude. Just like the other ones, I can double click, move things around, and that's looking pretty great. For this one, we're gonna practice flattening. You have the example above. Let's left click and drag over here. Let's go ahead and just simply flatten these shapes. You can see those are a whole bunch of different rectangles. There's still a whole bunch of different rectangles, but when I add the image fill in here and change that to be a gradient, I can then change it to be radial. I can make some pretty cool designs and adjustments so that that shape has an entire fill that is unified. I can also left click and drag over all of these and change the corner radius. You'll see the corner radius changes in flattening compared to when you change the corner radius of the union. Feel free to poke around with these shapes and play some more. And then let's move on to making geometric designs. At first glance, there's a lot on this page. Let's zoom into the examples. These are the designs we're going to be making or drawing with shapes. You're gonna be making two icons, first one on the left, second one on the right. And then we're gonna learn how to fill these shapes with images. Let's move up to our first frame right here. But before I start designing, I want to add a layout grid. So select layout grid, which will be a 10 pixel grid for this example. Let's go ahead and click on a rectangle, hold down shift, snap it up to the top left, and let's make that exactly 50. Double click, hold down shift while selecting the bottom and top right vector points. And let's change this to, I'd say, let's change it to 20. Looking pretty good. Then let's go in, hit control C, control V, bring the second shape out just a little bit so you can see it. And then let's go ahead and scale it down by holding down shift. Let's bring it right there, looking nice. Let's double click, select the top right and the bottom left vector point. And let's change this to 12. Now we're gonna left click and drag over both of these, go back up to our very familiar more actions panel and click on subtract. Great, look at that new shape I have. Next, let's grab a square, make the square exactly 10 pixels. Double click, go to the top left vector point. Let's change this to 10, looking good. With both these selected, let's go back up here and click on Union. I'm then gonna select this new shape that I have, make sure it's dragged in the top left, hit Control C, Control V. Bring it down to the bottom right of this frame. Hover over the top right of that selection and rotate it 180 degrees. Select both shapes, hit Control C, Control V. Go to the top of that selection while holding Shift and rotate. Left click and select over all of those. Go to your More Actions and let's Union. Looking pretty nice. We're not gonna worry about the fills right now. Let's move over to frame two. Select frame two, go down and add a layout grid. For this one, let's go ahead and grab an ellipse, hold down shift, snap it to the top right. Let's make this exactly 50. Go ahead and hit control C, control V. 
Let's make this one a little bit darker so I can see it. Down shift and let's make that 20. Bring it to the very top and center of this first one. Nudge it one, two, three pixels down. Left click and select. Go to more actions and subtract. Let's grab another ellipse. Hold down shift and let's make sure that one is 50 as well. Nice. There we go. Make sure it's also aligned. Click on the arc. Sweep to 50. Right click. Flatten. Control C, Control V on this shape. Hold down shift and bring that new shape up you just copied. Left click over all of these three shapes now. Control C, Control V. Hold down shift. Snap it over here. Right click and rotate. Now what we're going to do is left click and drag over all the shapes in that selection. Go up here and union. Now when a shape is in union, you can change the shape's color. You can even add a gradient, which is really cool. It makes some pretty awesome and amazing things, which I like. But I want to go ahead and start making designs like I have down here. How do I get that image into my new shape? When shapes are in union, you can do this pretty easily. What I'm going to do is go ahead and select, let's say, this shape right here. Go to my image. While this view is up, hit Control C. Let's zoom back over here. Double click into my shape. Make sure the union is selected, not the frame. Hit Control V. Look at that. Let's go over here. Let's change this one right here. Let's go ahead and click this shape. Add fill. When this option is up, hit Control C. Go back to this shape. Double click in. Make sure it is the union selected, not the frame. Hit Control V. I can even go back. I can take that original fill away. I can click on the image, click on crop, and I can even drag down what part of that image is within the shape itself. Pretty neat. I can also go in and further edit the shape by double clicking and selecting it, going back to my more options, and I can union this. If I want to further edit the shape, I can right click the shape and flatten. When I flatten a shape that is combined and made up of other shapes, it creates a path of existing points that create the shape itself. I could go in and edit any part of this and make an entirely new design. Let's zoom on out. You can play around with this, add any of the fills that are within this file that are available to you. Let's move on to Design Playground. Design Playground really is, well, a playground of space for you to go ahead and maybe check out the inspiration from the examples here and start making designs of your own. One thing you might wanna do is maybe add this inspiration section to be a little bit bigger. You could find some inspiration from somewhere online, add those images in here that you might want to make and design or illustrate using shapes in Figma design. Hope you had fun learning some advanced tips and tricks of Figma design shapes and learning how to draw with these shapes as well. Have fun, happy designing.